and then I'm going to say anything you don't want. One more minute. Are we live? Yes. Okay. All right. I tested the batteries at home, right? That run three hours. Uh -huh. So if we're here still at 9 o'clock, I got problems. Better. I hope it's not. What? I hope it's not. Yeah, I'm just saying, but I'm letting okay. you know what I did. Uh, is it on? Every, is it? Okay, everyone, can you hear me? Okay, thank you. All right, we're going to begin the meeting. Um, before we begin, however, I'm going to request the board's approval on something. We have decided to try a hybrid meeting this evening where people who did not feel comfortable coming to the boardroom, to the ballroom, were able to zoom in. They are not able to ask questions, but they are going to be able to view the meeting. I'm requesting the board's approval at this time. All in favor of us allowing to do this, please raise your right hand. Okay, seven, nothing, we can continue, all right? We will start with um, Myrna and the minutes. Okay, we'll start with, uh, approve the minutes from the last meeting. Okay, we'll make a motion to approve the minutes from the last meeting. Any questions? You have a question? No, no. Oh, sorry. all in favor. Is that the 29th? Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. okay, all in favor? Raise your right yeah. hand. Yeah. Okay, seven zero. Let the minutes show that we approved R1, please. R3, excuse me. R1. R1. That was R1. R1. There's two minutes. Two minutes, I'm sorry. R1. Okay. All right. Next, um, we've got three home sales. Those are listed. We got, we got one more minute. Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. We have a second minute. In December 15th, minutes. Anybody questions? All, all in favor, please raise your right hand. That's all three again, please. That's all three. Seven, zero. Okay. We have three homes that have been sold. 12229 Landrum, 1239 Oak Vista, and 7811 Lando. And I, I think I'm aware that we have several more sales coming through that will go for the next time. Okay? I want to talk about a couple of issues now that are extremely upsetting to me to have even discussed. Okay? We are adults. And I think that we have behavior by both residents and guests recently that I find really abhorrent. Okay? The fact that residents have guests and the guests ignore every rule and regulation we have. You are responsible for your guests. If some of these people at the pool behaved that way at a country club or a hotel, they would have been shown off the premises. Okay? You are responsible for your guests. If you invite people, you make sure they follow our rules. Just because the pool is open and all the guests are there, doesn't mean that the residents still don't get to enjoy the facility. Okay? We have a beautiful community. The fact that I have a motion that we're going to have to hire a guard for the next two major school vacation periods because it is not fair for the clubhouse committee to have to be responsible for monitoring, I find ridiculous. Okay? You have a guest, you are responsible for your guest. If your guest misbehaves and we find out whose guest it is, you will have a penalty. You will be reported to the compliance committee for failure to comply. And I hate to have to even talk about something like this. Okay? The other issue that is really upsetting to me is we have had several incidents recently where people have been totally uncivil, incivility to members of the office staff and to fellow residents. Nobody is going to be nasty or uncivil to a member of my office staff. And that goes for any board member here. These people work extremely hard for our organization. They're dedicated, they work hard. No one, whether you're a member, a resident, or a member of a board, has a right to abuse anybody in this community. Okay? That's anybody that's, a, that's an employee or anybody who is a fellow resident. Okay? 
We have recent incidents at the pool where people are fighting over the level of music. Okay? We have a motion being presented by the clubhouse committee to hopefully rectify that situation. Okay? Nobody has a right to be yelling at a member of the office about sound at the pool. No resident should be yelling and threatening, pointing fingers and screaming at a fellow resident over the level of sound at the pool. Okay? We have issues. We try to share facilities. If this action continues in the future, you are leaving this board no choice but to report these issues to the compliance committee for some kind of penalty. And it would be my recommendation, and hopefully the other members of this board, that if that type of behavior continues, then you lose clubhouse privileges for a period of time. Okay? I don't even like having to have this kind of conversation. All right? You're all adults. A lot of people have lived here for a long time. I love this community, and I think most of you feel the same way. Be civil to each other. We've all been through a rough time. COVID has made us all crazy, okay? We're mentally exhausted, we're physically exhausted. There's no good news anywhere, okay? We are doing everything we can to keep this community open and running, and I want people to act as adults and be civil to each other. If you were children and I was your teacher, I'd be assigning you a 500-page essay on how to get along with each other and how to be an adult. I certainly hope I don't have to make that a penalty, okay? <laughs> Last issue for me is the wearing of face coverings. We have tried to be lenient with people we have tried to understand. A face covering means your nose must be covered. I'm sorry, you cannot have a face covering walking around with your nose uncovered. If you're going to do that, don't come to the clubhouse, okay? Don't come to a function. It's not difficult. My husband and I were at a show the other night, the other day at Palm Beach County Drama World. They actually told us that the unions require an audience to wear a mask, that the actors will not be able to perform if the audience doesn't wear a mask, okay? We have to respect each other. We have to respect the fact that, thank God, the numbers seem to be going down. We seem to be getting better, okay? And hopefully one day we won't have to wear masks in the clubhouse again. But right now we do. We have kept our facilities open. We want to keep them open. Please make it easy on all of us. I don't want anybody to have to be penalized. But if you're not going to obey the rules we've set up, then you leave us no choice. Okay? Thank you. I'm sorry, this is not a time. Do we have a question? I can't. Well, with a face covering. We're, I'm sorry. We're, we're not discussing that right now. We passed rules. We said face coverings. That includes a number of them out there. You can look up a definition of it. My request is that whatever you wear, it has to cover your nose. Thank you. Okay. Treasurer's report. <coughs> oh, I'm sorry. Oh, 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 I forgot about our fountains. Our fountains are a never-ending expense to this community. I think they look beautiful. We love them dearly but maybe we have to start some discussions on something else to do, because every time we turn around, Karen is showing us a bill for another repair to the fund. So I think maybe we might want to take some other ideas under advisement. If anybody here has suggestions on what we could do, then I'd like to hear from you. And maybe that's something that we can raise at the next board meeting. But I think it's something we have to consider because it's like a bottomless pit. Every time we fix something, there's something else that has to get Fixed. So there are other options available if we put in beautiful plants and shrubs. There's other things available. Obviously, it's not a decision that any of us make alone, but I would like to hear some suggestions from the community on what they feel we should be doing. Okay, thank you. Okay, well done. Hello. Uh, all right, I've got, bunch, I've got a bunch of stuff, so uh, I'm trying to go through a lot of this stuff fast. Um, the night is young, <laughs> but I'm not. Um, let me just do a real quick review of the month of December. Um, there were a few things that came through. We did finish the year. We did finish the year um, showing net income, and again, unaudited at this point, of 22,000. The expenses in December there were a couple of uh, items unusual. Um, and I guess December might be a normal thing, gift cards. Um, but we also had a castle bill 
that had fallen through the cracks earlier in the year that had to be paid. So if you look at if you look at the summary financial, we were 4,400 light or or negative for the month. If you took the castle out, we're actually positive. Uh, I want to follow up the lease really quickly. Are you saying we've got seven homes in the queue now to be sold? No, I said we've got these three. I think we have another two or three. Two or yeah. three. Two. Okay. Um, you'll note on the financials that the capital contribution number um, is is favorable to the year by twenty nine thousand. I do have a concern going into this year because we budgeted that it's going to be over forty thousand dollars. We're hearing in some cases where the where the market is a little bit soft. Um, you just don't know. But I would certainly recommend to anyone here that if you have an expense item that is discretionary, we're not talking anything that would, would in any way jeopardize the community or without a necessity. But if it's discretionary, think about holding off for a while. Let's just make sure that we, we can hit this budget. Because if we come up twenty, thirty thousand dollars short, because in fact we don't sell we don't sell the house and get the capital contribution, we're gonna have to try to find that somewhere. Okay, any questions basically on the P&L? Uh, I will note that, I've got my notes here somewhere. Uh, we spent another 800 hours on iguanas. My wife says thank you. Um, uh, no, that's about it. Uh, so now I want to get to what I think is really kind of the, the, the big issue. Um, when I got the December numbers, there were entries made by Victory. They didn't tell us what they were. They just move stuff around on the balance sheet, and I had to call them and say, what did you do? And I'll start right there and say they should be telling us what they did or telling us before we do it. Having said that, the entries that they made were audit adjustments from 2020. They were booking audit adjustments in December of 2021. So I asked Karen, hey, can I see the audit? Well, what we have is a draft. We do not have a final audit for 2020. And we're finding out about this one year after the fact. Okay, and on top of that, they're sending requests to Karen for information they need to finish the audit. Okay, the auditors, I believe, are still on the, on the agenda for tonight, but right now it's kind of hanging out there. I spent an hour and a half on the phone with them. The person that did the job left. There's a new person here. They've already kind of started some work on 2021. But I'm not really getting the, the, the what do you call them, GPD? What do you call them, GP what? GRG. GRG. Um, I, I'm, I'm not getting anybody reaching out and saying, hey, let's get together so we can finish off the audit. They billed us, they billed us for the audit, okay, for 2020, but I'm re-emphasizing here. An audit is not done for 2020. And then they're gonna start 2021. 2021 is gonna be really complicated because we have two accounting services. For the first six months, it was Castle. The last six months, it's been Victory. Okay, Victory's attitude is really simple. If it happened before July 1, it's not my problem. That's their attitude. They go, go back to Castle. Okay, so this could be a complicated process going forward. And in a lot of instances, it's really just gonna be a question of pulling check, looking at vouchers and things of that nature. Okay, so we're gonna try to get on top of it. I'd like to get to Victory. Um, because I think we should have some expectations. If they're going to do something, they should tell us. Uh, there were entries made in, in October moving some stuff around on the balance sheet again related to reserves, and their explanation was it was authorized by the board. Um, I was talking to Karen earlier. I, I don't have every month's financials at this point. I mean, I, I don't know how they're made available to what would be the, the average resident as opposed to somebody on the board. I have a few. I have some things from... Um, I have a couple of things from Castle, and I have a couple of months from um, from Victory, mostly since I took over and said, hey, I need this, I need that. Um, we're going to need to get that stuff organized, because when the auditors come in, they're going to say, hey, I want to see check number 33 that you wrote in March, and we're going to have to go into Castle's general ledger, not to mention uh, Victory's general ledger for anything after. So it's going to be a little bit complicated. The term in the industry is a substantive <laughs> audit. They're just going to come in there and say, I want to look at these 50 items and make sure they're right, or however many they do, that's how they're doing it, okay? So, so I'm kind of throwing this more out to the, to the board in general that we, we need to get on top of the accounting firm, the audit firm, and the accounting service to make sure that they're meeting our expectations. Victory, the people are really, really nice, but I don't like, and this was very frustrating for me yesterday, I, I, I felt like, what did you call it, hon? 
not a search and destroy, you put a treasure hunt. And I spent five or six hours yesterday trying to figure out what was going on, talking to the accounting firm, talking to whomever. Um, it, it shouldn't be that way. This is not a complicated situation, but it is, as Elise said, uh, whatever, a month ago, we are a million dollar business. Okay, we ought to run it like a million dollar business. Okay, so. Um, multi million. Multi, oh, oh, sorry, multi million. Um, see, when I wear a mask, I just lose my brain. Um, let me do, do, do um, that pretty much says what I really wanted to say in terms of the issues. We've got to get on top of it. You know, a lot of other communities out here have a finance committee. We don't. We don't have <laughs> we might have it. We may end up having the finance committee. Well, and again, it's whether it's a question of whether we have a finance committee that includes a committee that's not supposed to have a board member, right? But as a practical matter, I've, had, I've got a couple of volunteers that said, hey, I'd be, like, I'd be interested in getting involved. Um, and, and, and some of it is just basically the, um, the staying on top of things, and, and quite candidly, the more the merrier. Um, let's see. Um, Anything else, sir? Pardon me? Anything else? Yes. Um, I did mention the capital contribution. I would like to point out, and I think it's going to come out in the Times. Other communities don't even budget as revenue. They put it in a pool, they put it on the side, because they basically say it's not dependable income. So, just a thought we've got to stay on top of are they getting the housing sales? Uh, very quickly to finish up, um, Karen and I are going to get together tomorrow on uh, UBS for, in, for our investments. Um, I've been in touch with them. We've got a lot of stuff rolling over now. They're all, it's all very, very short term. We are going to probably, I don't know if you know what the term a ladder is, but we're going to roll the ladder out a little bit longer um, in order to try to get um, a little bit more income. Uh, if anybody wants an explanation, I'll give it to you after the fact. Uh, we've also lowered the amount of excess cash we have to a closer to a target for liquidity. So we just don't need to have $300,000 sitting there not earning a penny. Um, and I think that will do it. Okay. I'm sorry. Nancy, yes. I just wanted to. Excuse me. Say oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Steve. No, sorry, Thank Court. Um, looking at the year end, this is not the year end. This is the uh, finance for 12 31, the month of December, right? Don? And end full year. This is year end? Yes. Yes. Unaudited year end. Yeah. All right. Question, um, administration and common area expenses, why are we $18,000 in the hole? Or under budget, let's put it that way. You mean, you mean over budget? While we spend all the budget, budget is correct. Um, <clears throat> I think some of that's the castle. Okay, yeah. I answered that question. The rest I, I understand. Thank you. Okay, I'm sorry, go ahead. Nancy, you start with that. I just want to remind the You got to speak up. So I just want to remind the people that are not original residents that in the beginning for a few years we had a very active business committee and some other committee, but then the residents did not want to participate. So you really need to get some sort of committee <laughs> to find a committee to join the committee that you think you need. And I agree, you do need uh, the committees and you do need help. But it, it was lack of interest. That well, it, we're also open to suggestions. So if you have any ideas on committees you think we should have and that we don't, send, send me an email and I'm happy to take a look at it and address it with the board. I'm sorry, Stuart? Thank you. Uh, I'm not trying to be difficult. And uh, for the least, I am not trying to be rude in any way. When you, when you tell us that the audit has been paid for. I thought that's what you said. Bill, not paid for. Bill, 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 but, not, Bill but not paid not for. Not paid for. What type of audit adjustments has it made already? This is what I did. This is part of what I did. No, I understand. I understand. I mean, I, I was, that was being eight. I mean, I, I know how this stuff works. Okay. They've made adjustments to the balance sheet in terms of how the reserve, the excess rate, what they call reserve interest, how that is categorized. They've redistributed that into liabilities. They also set up a bad debt line because it was there, it was buried in retained earnings, okay? Some of their other adjustments, I mean, quite honestly, a lot of it is geography on the balance sheet is a lot of it. 
Okay, I'd have to go back and double check. I have the draft on our report more than half your cast on the list of adjusting anchors. Nothing dramatic. Nothing dramatic. It's more right now we're in clean up mode. We've got to clean it up, get an issue. Give me the definition of capital contributions as an asset. Well, it's as a revenue. As a revenue start, as a revenue. Yeah. Well, when, when somebody when somebody buys a house and they're moving into the community, they have to pay an application fee and they have to pay one quarter's HOA as a capital contribution. So if we have a budget of forty-two thousand dollars, we need to sell more than two houses a month to hit that forty-two thousand at seventeen hundred and two dollars per house. Okay. So Carol, um, my question, uh, John, is about the bad debt. It's a contra. It's a contra asset. A, a bad debt allowance is actually a credit balance. Right. So in other words, if I have a receivable of 100000 and I have a bad debt of ten, the ten has parentheses because my net receivable after allowance is 90. So it's a contra. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Okay, any other questions? Okay, thank you, Don. Karen? I'll pass it. <laughs> Want me to read it? Okay. Unfortunately, Andrew is out there, and I don't have the information regarding cleaning cream. Monthly work orders. However, upon her return, I shall send an email blast with information for those who are interested. Our fountains, as Elise said, the South Fountain required a new pump. The replacements been made. The charge was $1,101. Access Masters is the vendor who services our gates. RFID readers are needed at the Oakvista and Whitworth Parkway gates. We're now using loaners. Access Masters is requesting that we purchase the loaners or buy new. They want back their equipment. Two new readers installed is $9,744. We contacted Gate Masters for comparison, quote, they were on site and gave us a quote of $13,250. We're in the process of researching a third vendor for an additional quote. We have beehives. We were advised by Clean and Green that there are several beehives by the perimeter walls. Hometown Pest Control was contacted for a price. The cost $12.50 to eliminate. However, we then need a stucco contractor to prepare the walls because the bees are inside the stucco and wood. We also contacted wildlife troopers and their price was totally unacceptable. Again, we're researching a third vendor. Another security company, the business office with consent of the HOA president, has contacted another security company for a quote. I was impressed with Platinum Security. Elise and I had two meetings with the president their performance was impressive. However, the cost prohibited. We will continue to remain with say the guard services. Our guards recently received a raise from $10.25 per hour to $12 per hour. Tree trimming continues at Avalon. They're now on Hagen Ranch Road. The trimming project should be completed within the next week. Chris Kinsey Landscaping has completed the two beds at the sports complex by the tennis courts. Creative contracting will be commencing with projects on Monticello Way. Sidewalks, valley gutters will be replaced and there will be paper repairs and asphalt repairs on the roadway close to the valley gutters. The trees causing these problems have been removed. Upon job completion, new oaks will be installed for PVC code. Pressure washing sidewalks of our community commenced since CNG has completed the inside of our community is now trimming on Hagen Ranch. Our maintenance supervisor has started with the sidewalk pressure cleaning. Macho firms on berms on Oak Vista Drive. Many homeowners have been, been upset with the berms behind their homes. I had requested that monies be set aside to address the berms on Oak Vista for 2022. The monies have been allocated and we will be placing macho firms on the burns. Owner of CNG has inspected. Clean and Green will advise when the work will begin. 2023 will be dedicated to burns on New Holland. Repair after repair. 
maintenance of the equipment property had become a full-time job. The patent bars on the doors leading out to the pool from the grand living room required new rods and cylinders. We're waiting price from a 24-hour box. All men's urinal, urinals have been repaired since, uh, have not been repaired since I've been the outcam. All urinals have now been repaired due to leaks. My computer was replaced due to old age. The bulbs are replaced often in the north and south hallways of the clubhouse. The fountains are a money pit. The pumps are changed quite often because they run all day, every day. The fountains have to be maintained due to the reclaimed water that, the co that discolor the tiles. The AC units are breaking down, requiring freon. The golf carts are in need of service, batteries, repair of the broom. Uh, Christmas decor has unplugged the lighting. They will be on site to remove the balance of the lighting. Betty Francis, our social director, is out due to illness. The business office will be working with the, com with the social committee regarding email blasts, check deposits, to ensure that it all continues to run smoothly. <clears throat> we all wish Betty a speedy recovery. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Okay? Joe, lawn? Status report on the lawn. Oh, lawn. I heard something. Grass. Status report on the lawn. The, uh, the virus, for those of you who did anybody, if they did attend, there was a three hour conference this past week on the virus and what other communities are doing or what they're recommending to be done. The problem is the virus, as it attacks the grass, kills the grass, and then when it kills the grass, you get weeds. So we have a lot of residents complaining about weeds. The problem is not the weeds. The problem is there's no grass to choke out the weeds. I hope we're making that clear that when the grass dies, weeds take over. It isn't that the weed killer will correct the problem. It that those areas have been attacked by the virus. The uh, the grower has been coming into the community and hopefully we'll finish up, I thought this week, but maybe by next week, an analysis of all the homes and giving us an estimate what each home will require to have it convert over to the new grass. The new grass is, is not a Florentine based glass and the Florentine is very susceptible to the virus. The Florentine is what we have, which is the St. Augustine grass. And that is our problem. The St. Augustine grass was developed about 30 years ago to take care of the virus at that point. So this is a cycle that we go on with life. And now there will be a new glass, which will be the palmetto grass, which will not be killed by the lethal virus. Um, so I can't give you any estimates of what's going on until I get back. And they go down by house by house and tell us that this house will take one skid, this house will take two skids, this house will take one and a half skids. And then we'll have a better idea of how much each homeowner will have to be charged or pay, excuse me, have to pay for them to do the job. In addition to that, obviously, we have the HOA property. A rough order of magnitude of guessing right now is, because everybody asks, every once in a while, the whole project for the whole community is about $1.2 million. I will estimate that at least a half a million dollars of that will be towards for the HOA. We don't know the exact numbers until I get back to skids and what, how much skids go in each area. Um, that is basically a summation what it is. Uh, it's a problem throughout Palm Beach County. It's a problem throughout Southeast Florida. And it has now made its way towards the West Coast. Naples and that area is starting to have their fun. Tampa and all that. So that's the only thing I have right now. Okay, thank you, Joe. By the way, if anybody is interested, I was sent the link so if you'd like to listen to the three hour meeting, I'd be happy to forward it on to I'm being serious, the link. So just uh, send an email and I can forward that on to you. On okay. that, sorry Lisa, on that, if you thought you don't have to listen to the three hours even though I did, um, you'll get a good gist in the first half hour. You don't have, you'll, you'll get everything you really need to know what's going on. They just had different experts coming in to tell different opinions of what could be done. And you heard it all in the first half hour. Yeah. Sorry, Liz. That's okay. I was just letting people know if they are interested, I'll be happy to forward the link on to them. Okay? Director's comments. Steve, we'll start with you. Any comments? Yeah, what we have gone over now prior to this. No comments. No comments. Okay. Howard? 
I have one comment. Now that everybody's getting the self-test kits for the virus, please let everybody know if you have it. So certain people, if they're exposed to you and have other problems, it can be fatal. Just let people know. It's not an embarrassment. That's what I have to say. Thank okay, you. Joe, anything else to add? Well, then I'll add something on okay. that. So just a point, my personal, my personal doctoring. The self-kits are great and uh, the self-test kits are great, but the best, the quickest way to find out is an oximeter. The virus attacks your lungs. There's no particular number that you have to worry about. It's just a constant number. So like my wife's hub number is always 92, 93, and mine is always 98 to 100. It makes a difference. But when Barbara if hers drops to 88, I know I have a problem. If my drops to 92, I know I have a problem. But the virus attacks the lungs you'll know it immediately by an oximeter. It's an inexpensive investment. I do it daily like blood pressure. I tell everybody the following things. You go to the doctor, the doctor does three things that you, when you get into the office before anything happens. The first one everybody hates because I put you on a scale. The next thing they do is they clamp something on your arm and they put an oximeter on your finger. So understand, blood pressure and oximeter are great indicators. Great early warnings. Sorry. Okay, go ahead. Lenny, anything to add? Yeah. This is something I don't know if Don was going to bring it up. There's some pending legislation in the Florida legislature that's going to prohibit fines being imposed by HOAs. So yeah. I don't know if your group of yeah. presidents is they've, doing anything. We've seen it, yeah. But wait, we've been sent information on it. So okay. then. My, which me, which not so much the fines, what it means is that you can't put a levy on someone's home. In other words, if you find them because they didn't do something um, and they go to sell their house, you can't put a levy on it to try and get your money back for the fines. Okay. So yeah, I don't whether, it's, whether it's gonna pass or not, but it most likely, uh, likely will. Um, I just wanna add one thing. I like, when I was playing bocce ball today, I learned that someone on the opposing team that wasn't playing suddenly. Okay, I'm sorry, can you hear me? Sorry. Uh, when I was playing bocce ball today, I learned that the, one of the people on the opposing team wasn't playing because they had COVID, okay? It would be nice if people had COVID, if you let the office know so we could let people know because that, you know, I didn't have any exposure to her beyond maybe three weeks ago when she didn't have COVID. But the point is, we all have contact with each other. If somebody has COVID, just tell us. It's not a black mark against you. It's a courtesy and it's a consideration for your fellow residents and people you might have been exposed to. Thank you. Go ahead. Do you have anything to add, Don? Yes. Are you, are you shocked? No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, there, you know, there's a president's group meeting. There's also yeah. the, the treasurer's group meeting. One of the topics that came up last year, which is my first, and a lot of what they talked about was not particularly relevant to this community, but they were talking about whether you should go for electronic delivery of the monthly magazine versus the current cost of print. If we're talking about saving money, yep. I think that's saving 18000 if I'm not mistaken, to go with this plan. So, you know, again, I don't think this is the time for a show of hands, but, but some of these communities are to go by the website, they do it because they'll send out a PDF. Um, if we think we need to save some money, which, which is proven, yeah. That might be the way to go. It's just a question of how important the hard copy is for everyone. No, and we have done that uh, when during the COVID the crisis, and that's certainly something that you know we can address. We can take a look at how we're budgeting over the next month or two, and if we feel that's you know we're going to have some issues, then that's clearly something we could consider doing. I'm sorry, yes, Nancy. There are some elderly people and some people in this community that even if they have computers don't know how to use them. So I really think it's something that has to be investigated and discussed. Well, we can also print up, you know, you can also take what's on the website, you can print up some copies and have that available to the people who, for whatever their reason, don't wish to look. But, that, but the point is you can send emails out, email blasts out to people who have computers and use them and they ignore the email blasts anyhow. So that's, that's certainly an issue we can address. Mary, did you have anything to add? Okay, thank you. All right, now, committee task force report. Social committee. Melissa, do you have anything you want to mention to us at this time? Thank you. Here. Actually, we're talking to this. Can I help you? 
I really need to thank. Um, it's on. Yeah, it's on. Is it okay? Yeah. yeah. I really need to thank um, Karen and Andrea for they've been great help to us since Betty has become sick, um, and we have three new uh, chair people <laughs> on the committee. They are a saving grace, and I'm going to say thank you. Though she's probably going to tell me to Brenda, who, when we could not contact Betty actually called the hospital and spoke to the nurse and asked the nurse to tell Betty what a wonderful job Masha Picha was and how she appreciated it. And the nurse said to Brenda, she will really like to hear that. It will make Betty feel good. So I really want to thank Brenda for thinking about it because I did not. Um, the, the one thing that we have changed. We canceled, but you know, Valentine's, uh, we canceled many things that have been doing. So we decided on March 18th to do um, one of our Friday nights for the community. Yeah. Melissa, yeah, we'll talk about that because it's on the list here. It's on the list. And that's what agenda. we put in for, for the commission to yeah. do that, where we're not taking any risk. We, if we have to cancel it, it's easy to do. Um, we can do it outside, but we don't have to worry about making any commitments. And we can just <coughs> make sure and not lose money right. to take care of it. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay. Um, I, I, I know people are going to ask this question, so I'm going to ask it, Jackie. Because we had a show that was booked for Saturday that was canceled temporarily. Postponed. postponed. Okay. People want to know one, do we have a new date yet? Any idea when we will have a new date? Hopefully. Okay, because the issue is clearly, obviously, if it doesn't get rescheduled, then everybody is totally refunded. And if it gets rescheduled, it's my understanding that if you have a conflict with what the new date is and you hold tickets, then you will also get your money back. Am I correct on that? Yes? yes. Oh, okay. Thank you. All right. Now, um, old business. Do we have any further information, Joe, on the installation of the Wi-Fi hearing impaired system? Well, Mark has been trying to get Don Chamberlain to do it, and like everything else, he runs around. He's always promises and never fulfills, as Karen knows. The system is in the house. We need it installed. Don Chamberlain's the only one. Karen's aware of that. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Now, we have a really huge new business list, and there's actually even another motion to add, and it'll be number V, which isn't on yet. So I'm going to skip around a little bit to try and get the stuff that I think we can take care of quickly over with. Nothing will not be discussed. I promise we will go back to stuff that's going to take a little more time. Okay? So we're going to start with A. We're gratifying the approval of the penalties for refusing to wear a mask while attending the entertainment shows. The penalties are loss of clubhouse access and use of transponder for one month. Okay? This is something that has been posed to the board and everybody had voted for. I'm again asking it to be ratified. All those in favor of ratifying, please raise your right hand. Oh, 7-0, thank you. B, uh, and I know this sounds ridiculous because the show was canceled, but we have to ratify it because we did vote on it. Approval for the Fleetwood Mass show um, that was supposed to take place on January 22nd. Have speakers set up in the pool area to accommodate people with tickets to the show, but who felt uncomfortable in the ballroom. There was going to be a cost to the HOA of $250 for the speakers. This had all been approved. Um, I'm requesting it has to be ratified. All those in favor of ratifying it, raise your right hand. 7-0. Um, this is also something that we will take under advisement for the next show coming up in February. Let's see what's happening with the numbers and what things look like before we just make a decision on that, okay? C. We want to ratify approval for the motion for the replacement of unsightly shrubbery and mulch in the tennis courts. Okay? Works to be performed by Chris Kenzie Landscaping at a cost of $2,685. We have polled. This is all approved by the board. Um, all those in favor of ratifying it, please raise your right hand. That is 7-0. Sue, you wish to say something? Uh, Chris finished it all today. Okay. It really looks beautiful. Okay. I mean, that whole area... I'm head of landscaping has nothing to do with it. But it really I mean makes the community so pretty. 
with all these flowers. Well, we, we've had to wait to do it, as you know, just because of the amount of money we have spent at the right. sports complex. So once we were into the meeting, we were able to proceed, and I'm glad it looks so nice. That's the pictures. Okay, I'm going to skip a couple of them because I want to get through these roster list approvals really quickly. To approve the new roster for the welcome committee. Any questions concerning the roster for the welcome committee? Oh, that's uh, G. Okay. Okay. All those in favor of approving the roster for the welcome committee, please raise your right hand. Seven zero. Okay. H. Seven zero. H. To approve the new roster for the ACC committee. Any questions? All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Seven zero. Thank you. To approve, I, to approve the new roster for the entertainment committee, and actually we were sent a corrected one, which I gave everybody that Jackie handed up. For some reason, she had inadvertently left Jerry off of it. Okay, we don't want Jerry left off of it. Jerry who? <laughs> <laughs> All those in favor, place your right hand. Seven zero, okay. Uh, Jay, to approve the new roster for the landscape committee. Any questions? All those in favor, please raise your right hand. 7-0. K, to approve the new roster for the sports complex committee. Any question? All those in favor, please raise your right hand. 7-0. L, to approve the new roster for the clubhouse committee. Any question? All those in favor, please raise your right hand. 7-0. To approve the new roster for the compliance committee. Any questions? All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Okay, now. Question? Yes. Uh, please ask the secretary to make up a list to make sure there's no committee that has not submitted a new roster within 60 days of December 2nd. Okay. Because otherwise the committee cannot function. So it's better to let's see it now, find out now. We have any committee that did not submit a new roster. Okay, I know we approved some at the last meeting. Uh, so just take, make so up a list. If, if, Mern, if you want to take a check between the last. Social committee. Social committee. So then we need an updated one. The social committee. I'm not sure. Is there any other committee we're missing? Technology. Don't try to do it here. No, at, at least, saying, least, least. Have it. We'll check it, Mona, okay? Technology. We'll right now, technology. let's move on mm -hmm. to. Um, P, to approve the social committee motion to cancel the Valentine's party and to replace it with a poolside happy hour for Friday, March 18th, moving from 4.30 to 6.30 at a cost of $3 per person. Now, Melissa had started to talk about it. Are there any questions concerning this? Okay. All right. Um, anybody else have any questions or want to say anything? All right. Uh, all those in favor of allowing this function, raise your right hand. Okay. 7-0. Thank you. Okay, now, okay, we're going to go back. We're going to go back to E. Okay, this is to approve retaining our accountants, Gerstle, Rose, and Goldenberg, for the next two audits, which will be 21 and 22, of our community at a cost of $6,700 per year, and to approve their invoice for the 2020 audit budgeted in 2021 for six thousand seven hundred dollars. Now, Don, can you speak a little bit mm -hmm. further on this issue? Mm -hmm. You don't well, want to. Well, Karen, Karen's can jump in after I bore everybody. Um, okay, as I told you, they haven't finished 2020. They've just barely started 2021. I personally don't pay them for 2020. It's been whole. hold. If it was a good progress payment, give them fifty percent. But until the audits deliver, I don't think we pay them. Okay, just to let you know from a, from a financial standpoint, we've accrued, so sitting on the balance sheet is what's 13,400. So we've got two years of accrued. So that's one question. Do we pay them or only pay them half and, until they finish the audit? But then, quite honestly, it, 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 uh, unless there's an economic reason that we should do it now, I'm personally not, given what I'm looking at, we're going to need to re-up them for two years right now. And that's just my opinion. I mean, they again, they're a year late delivering an audit. I, okay, I, I think the initial issue with that was that we felt if we didn't that they would be raising their rates for the second year. And, and that's what I think. We're going to lock them in. Yeah. We're going to lock them in. 
Uh, but I think it's incumbent upon us that we get on top of them. I, I agree with you, but that's what's to lock in the race that they couldn't raise us. So that was the reason to that. That's fine. I have. I, 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 uh, I understand. Okay, Joe. What, norm, what normally goes on is they submit a draft, and the day they submit a draft, they submit a bill. They submitted a draft that's unacceptable, so therefore the bill should not be considered okay. for being paid. So I'm opposed to paying them for anything additional for 2020 until we accept the final audit. Have, have we paid them anything for 2020? But that's what it's saying here, but you're asking to no. approve okay. the invoice of 2020 for $6,700, and I'm not in favor of approving the invoice because we haven't accepted the draft audit. Okay, then why don't we I think it? Don agrees with me, right? right. I, I agree, but I also think that, that, that it can be an established practice that you will do some form of partial payment in terms of good faith. They have been incurring costs. So I certainly wouldn't pay them the whole 6700 but if the board collectively believes we shouldn't pay them anything until they're done, That'll put some pressure on them, and we'll tell them we'll tell them that we're going to we're going to sign you up for two more years, but you got to get this done. Um, does that Joe, does that make sense? That that makes sense, but it's just a history of they always just the day you get the draft, you get the invoice. In the past, when we requestioned, as Len could support me on this, when we requested the draft, we did not pay them until we accepted the audit. And actually, since we're talking, since we're talking on it for a second, this is this is for the board. One of the things they asked for is a management representation letter. It's a typical thing that the auditors do. They're basically saying members of management have to, in effect, uh, sign a document that says, "Hey, we stand by these numbers. Blah blah blah. We know we're responsible for them." Okay, um, uh, Joe, you're probably going to have to do that in 2020, and I don't know whether it's going to be Jerry or Len that would have to do it, but neither. At least, nor myself should be signing it for 2020. Mm -hmm. And the fact is, I didn't even come to work till the end of 2021. So once we get to that point, and I'm just throwing it out there, so you know you're going to have to do that. They're going to want that as part of the audit process. But with all the changeovers and things, you know, we'll have to figure out who's going to make the representation. I personally won't sign something for 2020. Okay. I didn't even live here. All right, then I'm not, <laughs> then I have a suggestion that we break this into two parts to approve. Retaining their services is one part, so why don't we do that first? Why don't we see, does anybody, what's the vote on approving to retain their services for the 2021 and 2022 audit, okay? All those in favor of doing that and locking in the rate, raise your right hand. So that's 7-0, okay? The other part. I'm sorry, you got a question? I'm sorry, Ed, go ahead. Um, it sounds like we're, we're approving this order firm, and um, I don't know how long we've had them in the past, but based on what I'm hearing, uh, there's been an issue with that. So why don't we possibly look at another order firm? That's well, number one. Okay. Uh, number two, um, under normal circumstances, yes, I think there should be a progress billing, so I would agree with, with what Don is saying. And then the last thing is, uh, based on what was going on the last year or two, COVID might have had an impact on. It has. They're totally going on virtual right now. Right. And, but they're even going their office. And we've never had a problem with them before. Okay. So this was the first one. So this enables us. We've locked it in. The and, sec and, and the fact is, we're approving 2021, and they've already started the work. Right. They haven't finished 2020, but they started 2021. 2021. So, so the other part well, the of the motion is do we wish at this time to approve paying them for the 2020? audit. Um, would be my recommendation that we say no at this time. Excuse me. Give me a second. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. We, ha we got invoice for them because we received the draft. So as far as they're concerned, they're finished. As far as we're concerned, and correct me if I'm wrong, Don, we're not accepting it. Well, we're not accepting it because they also sent us a document that said, these are the things you need to give us in order for us to complete But the, the point is... Copies of checks and all kinds of things that they need for their work papers. So they can issue that report, that, that draft report all they want, but, but then concurrently they're saying, oh, by the way, we have all the information we need. So under that argument, they're not done. Right. right. That's what I'm yeah. saying. We're not accepting the draft. The right. discussion, that's all so, I'm saying. The, so the motion then is, at this time, do we wish to pay them for what they've submitted? All those in favor of paying the bill for $6,700, raise your right hand. 
Can we do partial? All those opposed. Uh, and, and, you're, and what you said, Joe, is we've never paid them partially in the past? We've, they've never requested it. We never did it. Okay, then, <clears throat> then we'll, we'll say no. If they come back to us and they look for a partial payment, then we will discuss the issue at that time. I don't think it would be wrong to pay in half. I mean, that's just my opinion. Okay. All right. Do we want to raise that as an issue now? Probably, probably. Okay. We're all here. You don't want to do it. Well, do you want, well, let's do that then, okay? Does anybody feel, let's put it this way, we've, we've decided not to pay them in full. Does anybody here feel that we should be making a partial payment of 50% of the bill at this point in time for what they have presented to us at this date and time? All those in favor of it, please raise your right hand. 50%? Four to three. You didn't ask who's opposed. Oh, all those opposed, three. Well, let's, we're going to move on to the entertainment. Okay. All right, Jackie, I'm going to need you. Um, we're going to, this is to approve the entertainment show series for 2023 for a total cost of five shows for a total cost of $37,300. Item was budgeted at $40,300. Okay. Um, we've attached the shows. Jackie, could you please come in? Does anybody have any issues concerning that? Okay, Steve back. We are in a we are in a crisis now, and we saw what happened this last show. And I don't know what recourse, but I think you spelled it out that we're doing a new date and it doesn't accommodate the residents, they can get a refund. I think going forward on any new contracts on the entertainment, we should have outs if the entertainers are not available and they cancel the show, we have the right to get our money back. And I think those things should be put into the new contract for 2023. Okay, well first of all, we haven't paid, we do not pay until the performance. Okay, so that, that but under the contract, we're still stuck on the old rules. Not if they not if they cancel. In other words, what was the issue we have right now with the show that was canceled? They postponed. Excuse me. They postponed it because they had someone sick. If we cannot work out an appropriate new date that functions both well for this community as well as the performers, then there is, there's no contract. The contract is void. Okay, under those circumstances. If we are able to come up with a, a date that can get rescheduled, that meets everybody, that we feel is accommodating us appropriately, not, not in the middle of July or something when half the community isn't here, but a date that really could work and function with people who have tickets to come see it, then we will move forward. If you, as a ticket holder, have a conflict because of the change of date, then you are entitled to your money back. That has always been the rules, okay? From my understanding of any time the entertainment community has done anything, that if something, if they have to change a date, if the performer changes the date, then you have a right to get your money back if there's a conflict. Okay. Um, if if our if the Palm Beach County closes down everything, then you're out of the contract. Okay. If God forbid we're in the middle of a hurricane, uh, a tornado, and the roof blows off the building then obviously we're out of the contract. There are certain circumstances that are built in, but just us saying, gee, we don't think we want to move ahead with the show, nobody is going to give you a contract under those kind of terms. You know what I mean? That's a gay show. That's a whole well, thing. None of these are gay shows. No. These are all straight up over the show. These are, these are it's a totally different kind of contract. It's, it's a totally different item, okay? Anybody else have any questions about these contracts? Joe. I'm opposed to the contracts as, as submitted for multiple reasons. Uh, number one is I would have loved to seen a uh, anticipated revenue for each show. What are we going to charge the tickets for next year? Number two is, as you stated, we don't want to reschedule in July, but the contract says they have to reschedule within six months, not a year later. So, yeah, But it if, has to be a date that's accommodated by both parties. But it says six months. Okay, Jackie, uh, we'll talk please okay. let me finish talking. Go ahead. The contracts say that if the show is canceled, postponed, it will be rescheduled within six months. That means a February show will be coming up in August. It should be a year. 
I'm opposed to the poor wording in one contract only of the COVID clause and the other four contracts don't even anything about a COVID clause. I'm, re I'm concerned about now that we installed 13,000, uh, I'm sorry, $10,000 or there about a side screens, who's operating the side screens? In other words, if they say they're supplying the sound person in the past, we did not bring somebody in to run the screen, run the room. It was no additional charge. Now they're just having their people do the sound. Who's taking care of our needs? Which it's me, okay. yeah, an additional expense. But that's what I wanted to see okay. the profit and loss statement. I want to know how much out of the thirty-seven thousand three hundred dollars the committee anticipates the community is going to subsidize it. That's what I asked for. In the past, when we had these shows, we also approved the price of the tickets and we approved what was going on and when that was it. I don't see anything about income. So right now I can't support these. Jackie? Jeff, first of all, we're working the on the budget, but we couldn't work on the budget until we knew if this was going to be approved. If it's not approved, we can't work on a budget. And that's been in the past always. That's number one, always. We get the contracts approved, then we do the budget based on the contract. As of right now, we're meeting on Sunday to go over the budget with Glenn, Elise, Jerry, Sue, and myself. With uh, the price. As we think the price is going to be the same as $41 a ticket, and the package is going to go to Jerry, $190. Uh, I, I put together a budget that we've used in the past. It, it pays all the costs of the contract and entertainment. Uh, we built in the food costs, we built in advertising, we built in uh, $200 a show for sound except for one that has 500 so almost 1300 for the year. The, we made the assumption uh, that the, there would be 200 uh, series tickets sold, and $190 a piece, and there'd be 30 show tickets sold for each individual show for $41 a piece. If those numbers hit, there'd be, if I remember correctly, $1,500 surplus mm -hmm. revenue over expense. Uh, and so th that's the first draft of the budget, but that's roughly the numbers that are going to be talking about. And I'm sorry, Jerry, is that? Um, so, so that would be at the $37,300 or is it the $40,300 that we budgeted for the item now? Yeah, 37, 37, 37, three. then. So it's actually coming in. Yeah, but, 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 but. Okay. All right. Thank you. Any no. other board members yeah, but, but just, to say? Not either. Not another. The same. <laughs> Go ahead. In the past, it always came in with, that budget came in with, well, I'll show you the motions that I looked it up. The motion shows in the past the price of the series tickets and things like that. This wasn't brought up this time. The $40,000 budgeted expense, which is now going to be $37,300, also had a $40,000 income. So it was a wash. So you're not comparing. You're comparing what we're spending to what we're going to anticipate to come in. Not against the $40,000. We're spending $37,300. How much is your anticipated income? You've answered some of my questions. I appreciate that. But I believe that should be part of the motion to approve a commitment to $37,300. That's all. It's my opinion. That's all. All right. Melissa, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Anybody, I'm sorry. Any other board member? No. I, Melissa? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Steve? The, I'd like to bring up a point that the cost on the screens that is a capital gain for the community and not anything towards an entertainment uh, reimbursement. We, we put in no screens idea. and monitors for the screens for the shows. That was, that was a, no, for everything. That's for everything. So for that everything. was a cost basically to the community as a capital gain for the Joe, you can answer that. That was a cost. That was a capital improvement. If capital improvements are less than 2% of the annual budget, the board can approve it without going back to the community. If the capital improvement is greater, that, that was not the point I brought up. The point up I brought up is that in the past, when they said they're supplying the sound, we had zero expense. Now you've answered the question. They've answered the question that they understand that, and now they're bringing in additional expenses 
to, 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 to their budget, which they answered. Jerry, Jerry answered that. Now. But that's the first I'm hearing about that they took into consideration. We have side screens, and they are going to be used. Jackie, I have to say that the They're right there. It's in the packet. In the, packet. the packet clearly sets forth who the entertainment is. Anybody else have any questions or comments? Uh, well, the other comment I think was that when we were talking about ticket prices, I'm looking at this might be the show with different sounds. Is uh, the Jay White show? That's more expensive. It's a ten thousand dollar show. Yeah. Well, Would you charge more for the tickets for that? Jay White is a ten thousand dollar show. He is a Neil Diamond, the Neil Diamond impersonator, uh, comes out of Vegas. I'm not arguing the ten thousand. I'm arguing the ticket price. But it's our sound. Our sound is the agent is picking up the sound, and we're picking up two hundred dollars. Okay. But it's a ten thousand dollar show, not an eighty-two hundred dollar show. But right. right. every show is different on the price based on the town. Okay. Anybody else? Right. I'm sorry, Brenda. Uh, this year we've had so many people bitch about coming to the show with masks. What is what in the event that next year in the event that next year um, we have a pandemic? What I know you're going to say that you have choices. Everybody has choices not to buy food. But if you have several of us people who have been living here 17 years who have taken all the tickets, the new people hardly have taken the tickets. What, what's going to happen? Can we get our money back? No. No, we can't. Okay. It's, it's the same okay. thing if you buy tickets okay. to Kravis. I'm just saying, That's please let me finish. If you buy tickets to Broward, you buy tickets to Kravis Center. I mean, we buy season subscriptions to theater companies. Like I said, we were at the Palm Beach Drama Works the other day, and they literally said, you know, you're going to be wearing a mask. Even if, you know, it's a union rule, the actors cannot perform if you don't wear a mask. You have to, it, it's your option whether you buy a subscription, whether you wait till right before and you buy single tickets to a show. That is your option. I can't predict the future. If, it, if, if, if we could be closed down totally again. I mean, right now I'm looking at communities that are starting to open up again, and I'm hoping down the road maybe we won't have to wear masks in the clubhouse, okay? But we take it as it comes. I, if, I, if I could see the future, I'd be buying a lottery ticket, okay? I have no way of knowing what's going to happen next year. If you, if you don't feel comfortable buying tickets, then don't buy tickets. There's, there's nothing else we can do. I'm sorry, Nancy? I sat here while we finished discussing the show to see if one item would come up that I mentioned to Karen and it wasn't discussed. We ratified about people wearing masks and wearing masks properly. We've ratified the penalty for residents. We sell a lot of tickets to non-residents. 
What is their penalty? Is how are you going to handle that? Well, then if they have to wear a mask, they have to comply with it just like everybody else does. And if they don't, then they will ask them to leave. We have a guard who will ask them to escort them out. You have a guard for each show? We have so far. Yeah. And we're thinking of continuing that oh. just to pull, please see. I'm I sorry, Jackie. Say, we didn't sell tickets to outsiders like a stranger. People here bought tickets by Brenda bought for yesterday. So you can see well, that that resident is being day. told they have to take the penalty for mm -hmm. their yeah, yes. But we have to put it in writing and has not been voted on. Oh, I, I just I can't I can't put everything in writing, Nancy. I mean if I wanted to spotify these spotify. Oh, it I said it before though at the beginning. You bring a guest in, you're responsible for the guest. I said that. Okay? If the guest does something wrong, then you as the resident are responsible. I said that. I did say that at the very beginning of this oh, meeting. Yes. So that covers the first time heard Okay, but this carries on the guest with those Okay. Anybody else? Okay, I'd like to take a vote now to approve the entertainment show series for 2023. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Four. Okay. Five. 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 All those opposed. Two. Okay. Two. 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 Okay. Yes, Stephen Joe. Who? Stephen Joe. Okay. Moving on. Okay. We're going to move on to the Clubhouse Committee motion to hire a guard. I'm going to, that's O. Oh, I'm going to come back to the other one. And O. Oh, to approve the Clubhouse Committee motion to hire a guard for the pool area during the peak holiday period. That's April 15, 2022 through April 24, 2022, and 12 23 22 to 12 23. To, to, to 1 1 23, excuse me, okay? From the hours of 10.30 to 4.30, the estimated cost will be between $2,000 and $2,500 and would come under security expenses, okay? This is something I talked about at the beginning. I'm sorry we have to do this and incur this expense, but we have no choice. It's not fair for the clubhouse committee to have to be the hall monitors, okay? You have guests, you take responsibility for your guests because if you don't, we're gonna find out this time who the guest is who, who's the resident that invited them, and you will lose privileges. I, I don't know what else to do or say. It was abhorrent to me that people were cursing out members of the clubhouse committee, that people were bringing cigars and b beer bottles to our pool area, okay? Um, that people had infants in the pool, clearly under the age of three, okay? Not right, not right at all. Like I said, if you behave that way at a hotel or someone's fancy country club, you would have been shown the door, okay? So this is why we have to do that. Okay, any board member have any questions or comments? I do. I think the guard should be, is that on? Huh. Hello? Yes. Is it on? Oh. Mm -hmm. Hello? Yeah. I think the guards should be instructed that they don't sit there, they need to walk around. Oh, they would. <laughs> because the guard at this last show just sat there. That's a different thing. I you know. can't have a guard wandering up and down the aisle during the course of setting. A guard at a pool has to walk around. Who will be walking, that person will be walking around and will be monitoring and will make it very clear what the rules of the pool are. And if anybody tries to curse the guard out, they won't be staying too long in the pool. Okay. Well, I think the other thing too is that I don't know if it's, if it's in our docs or not, but if somebody does anything that causes the pool yeah. to have to be drained and refilled, uh -huh. they will pay for it. Yes, yeah. it's clear. It's in our docs that if okay. you have you or guest causes an action that causes a community a fee, then you are responsible for that fee. Okay. Yes. I'm sorry, Ed. Uh, Ali, um, how many instances like this have we had? We had a number this time. It's been a long time since we have had anything like that. I don't know, it's because we had a lot of people down from up north and they've been praised by the pandemic. Well, we, but but we've we, never, we, years ago I was told that we used to have a guard during the Christmas holiday yes. week. Yes. Okay. Have we considered finding out exactly who these people are and we, penalizing them? We're Here going to, but the point is these were guests. It was not fair, we had oh, no one but the clubhouse committee who tried to talk to people and said we're cursed out sworn at and ignored, okay? Well, they wouldn't know their names. They wouldn't know their names. So this way, if we have a guard, we might also think about having people sign in at the pool 
when they come during the holidays. That's an option I think we might, we might want to consider and that Debbie, maybe your committee wants to take under advising that during the holiday weeks, we have people sign in and say who they're a guest of. I was thinking because that's a way and I don't think that's going to be a problem to anybody. They come in and they sign in. So maybe you'd like to take that under advisement to your committee that during the holiday weeks, we have people sign in and they say, I'm a guest of Mary Smith or whatever. When your Bob tell you who's in? Too? Well, not necessarily. I guess I just think that the God is an open but that's my yeah, I wish, I, I, I wish we didn't have to do this. Okay, I'm sorry. Debbie? Um, I think that's a good idea. The only thing is that a lot of times, uh, we think we have discussed it before, <coughs> that you don't have to come with the residents to come to the Right. Place. But maybe there should be a column that you can always sign in and then say who you're Exactly. Yeah, I mean, because I, we tried, I tried to track back on the fob because we had an incident with somebody and we weren't able to track back on the fob who, who that person was. Okay, I'm sorry, one second. Yes? I don't know why, it's just a ratification. <laughs> okay. Yes, oh, most definitely. <laughs> A lot of guests walk through the main doors when you have holidays, mm -hmm. right into a beautiful entrance and the whole thing with their kids and walk out with their suits yeah. and everything. So that, part of that would have to be science required walking through the correct way and that a sign you put up, which we have on the point of our drive, no way. Lock it and lock the doors. Lock the doors. I mean, maybe the option then would be the lock the doors, or everybody has to go through the pool area. Okay, I'm sorry, that's great. We're going to have to do a little bit show stuff today of the. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Why do we hire a particular day during the holidays? It's going to have to be pool aside. I can't hear you. I, 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 it has to be pool aside in the class course. Yes. In what the rules and regulations are. Oh, definitely. I mean, okay. anytime, we'll, they'll be clearly informed of what our pool rules and regulations are before they start, and hopefully whoever we get that well, comes in April, maybe we'll get them again right. in December or not. If we go to the young lady over here, the clubhouse belongs to all of them. Whether you're wearing pearls or whether you're wearing a right. baby suit. But the baby suit is driving. You can walk in that front door and take the shortcut to the side if you really want to do this on that side. No, I understand that, but we... Those doors locked. To make them walk all the way around the clubhouse is ridiculous. It is our clubhouse. I understand what you're saying. I'm just saying that for those couple of weeks when we have an inordinate amount of guests, that in order to be able to make sure that we know who's behaving and who isn't, that that gives us the option of having control of the flow to the pool area. So I think for that short period of time, I don't think it's going to be overly difficult on anybody. If you can walk, if you can walk around the pool and go swimming, you can walk to the side door and go into the no pool. I don't think that's a an ordinary mind. I'm yeah. sorry, Debbie. Um, I don't think it's going to be a huge problem because it's only one or two people that will move through, and if the guard is not going to be sitting, right? Okay. He's going to be asking from the day and see what's going on. I don't think it will be a problem because the doors are right. the same as they wish. We will, I always say, the front of the pond will do because obviously it's a tripping hazard on a very polished floor. But we don't have that many people coming through. I don't think that would be, he will look out and see them. Okay. Mm -hmm. the we can put a notice on that. We can put a notice on that our preferences that you come through the pool, yeah, that you come through the breezeway in the pool area. I'm sorry. Yes, Alvin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
that's it. No, no, just these two special holiday weeks. Just so that we have some control over the amount of people coming in. We don't. Stuart? Okay, what about cameras? Hope we have cameras spread no. throughout the building. Do we no. have them in the main lobby or covering the front door? We will. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else have any other comments? Okay. All right. At this time, I'd like to have take a. I'm sorry. Can you cover? Yes. Go ahead. Okay. I'll move those from the back. Yes. We're coming over in the evening. Using a cloud coming in. Or if they don't want to be known, that's all they got to do is come through this gate on the back by that bumper and over by the hot tub. That is a safety factor. And I brought that up to you, Lee, and you told me to take it to the pump up. Right. It's not part of the pump up today. When we have the pandemic, don't lock the door. Am I right, Joe? The gates? We locked the building up. That's correct. correct. <laughs> the building was off limits to everybody. That, that, that is correct. So my question is, I came here for a lot of years checking. I found champagne bottles, champagne glasses. I even found a fair lady candy in the pool. So what is going to prevent the problem that we had this year? A group of teenagers or a group of adults, yes, come over, they come through this gate, they go to the clubhouse 11 o'clock at night, swim, do anything they want. What is your guard going to do? Well, the guard's only here from 10.30. I understand that we're hiring the guard for during the day when we had the vast majority of incidents. Please let me finish. When we had a vast majority of incidents where people were clearly disobeying the rules. I I have no idea. I I don't know if we can lock those gates. Is that a safety issue if we lock those gates? Are we in a fire violation? Elise, Elise. I mean, there's nothing. I mean, there's a point. We could could talk about this. possibility that we have a security guard in front and maybe during that time period after certain hours maybe once an hour he roams the surface the grounds here and checks for those type of things maybe that's a possibility i don't know we also float well we I'm okay. sorry, Joe. Then we'll what, what, what Ed is pointing out is we got to think about the logistics. I don't want to yeah. get into the discussion. But if what if somebody wants to come play pool? They come in the front door. The doors lead in the back of panic card where you can't lock them. They're into the pool. So we have to, but I don't think this is the place to discuss the logistics and how you're going to enforce this. Okay. And I think that's what Ed was pointing. Right, Ed? Correct. So okay. this is not the place to do it. Yeah. Okay. Then where is the place to discuss? What I always When do you discuss that? What happens is, as Debbie has mentioned, the committee comes back with a recommendation of how they're going to, if they want to do this, how they're going to enforce it. That's when you discuss it. You're now working as a committee here, and I don't think that's the point of the board. What is the recommendation? from the committee to, for us to do, for the board to consider to approve or not approve, not for the board to build a recommendation. That's my opinion, what the board's supposed to do. Okay, Debbie? The reason we are putting in a motion to have the guard, and I think the time that most people come are from 10.30 in the morning to 4.30 in the afternoon. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to get everybody. We're not going to keep people out who want to come and get out and come. We can't have a guard here. But the number of times it happens. I came myself a number of evenings there was someone swimming and I very kindly said, I'm so sorry you can't swim. They said, we didn't know, we apologize and they left. So we've got to pick our battles. And I think the battle is between yep. in the day when the kids are throwing balls from side to side or they've got the noodles in the jacuzzi and they're all swimming around. Or we've got young kids in the jacuzzi and it's too hot. A parent says, no. Uh, you don't know he's my kid and I'm a doctor and I'm, a, I'm saying he can stay. It's not 
that we have to have a twenty four hours. We're just trying to regulate. We will not be able to sit and police the twenty four seven. But we're taking the time from ten thirty to four thirty that we most of what goes on that's just okay. We can't lock the gate because that is an emergency. What does it say? We have an ambulance that needs to get in or fire. Mm -hmm. They haven't got time to try and get through the breezeway. They have to have access to the door. It might be wrong at 9 o'clock. It might be later. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Let's take a vote, please. All those in favor of passing this motion to allow the hiring of a guard for those who please raise your right hand. 7-0. Motion passed. Okay. Thank okay. We have a motion here by the Clubhouse Committee, and I'm just changing the wording slightly because it's my my mistake, to approve the Clubhouse Committee motion for the volume control of the pool deck to be set at level five. We're taking out the word permanently. And that the Clubhouse Committee will monitor the situation. Okay? This came about because of incidents we have had at the pool with people screaming at each other over the music and the level of the music. Like I said at the beginning, it is ridiculous to me that we even have to have this discussion, but we do. All right? So in order to accommodate, so everybody's happy, the people who want to sit by the pool and listen to music or swim, for the ladies or the gentlemen who want to play cards or mahjong out by the pool, this is for all of you to be able to get along together and know that that's what the music's going to be set at and nobody will change it, okay? If we have issues with people wanting to change it, then we will have to consider penalties, which is absurd to me, okay? So that's what this motion is for, is to be able to set the sound level at five, to have it monitored by the clubhouse committee if we feel it's too loud, too soft, whatever, that is something that will be taken under consideration. Any board member have a question or wish to discuss this? Steve. You're saying a volume of five. What's the volume going from one to ten, one to seven? Debbie goes from what, one to ten? The sound volume. It goes from what, one to ten? Yes. So five would be in the middle. In the middle. It's and on six now. Was it six? Six now. You know, this is a very delicate situation. That's why we brought it to the board. Um, we, this is not the first time. We've been going through this for months and years. And we keep on having to readjust and adjust it. And obviously we're in different times now. We had a committee meeting in January before all this came up. And we had a couple of complaints uh, that uh, they would like to sit by the pool if they were going to allow if you want to be reading, et cetera, et cetera. So when the clubhouse committee decided we thought to be reasonable to everyone, we would put it to file and we would monitor the situation. So often, I've actually just uh, been told by Ed, and I did not know this because I did ask for a plastic cover to be put on it so they can't be changed. They had them before, and they were ripped off. And secondly, uh, they just informed me that, which I didn't know, mm -hmm. that at night, the guard turns them down to two because of the neighbors. I did not know that. Yeah. So when I came coming in in the morning, they were down at two. And of course, then we had that incident on uh, Thursday, and you happened to say, what is the... Uh, the level we should right. have had it. Well, it has always been six for a long time, and it's been like that for years, actually. But we had just had that meeting in January where we all talked about and we discussed it, and I thought, well, maybe five at this time would be the better. But I agree with the pool people. They have one pool. They go there to enjoy it. We have the pandemic. We have people who don't want to wear masks in the... Uh, in the card room. Mm -hmm. They have many places to play cards. There's only one pool. I agree that all of these are bars. But the thing that we see that I said, Karen, when I want to know from the audience that how they were addressed and that wasn't right. So it is difficult. I know that if the card players and Marshall want to play outside, I understand why. This isn't going to be forever. Hopefully the pool people can get it back and have their pool to themselves. So I think the best thing is that to put in a motion and let the board decide and let each party discuss it and see what would be the honest and just compromise we can come to. Okay, thank you. Anybody else have any comments? Okay. Uh, Stuart? 
Okay, on occasion, some of the committees need to be outside. Be outside and not in a confined in a room. At that point, can it be turned down? And then we had one last week, and we had to turn it the volume down because we couldn't hear each other. Well, that, that also seemed to have been an issue because we were at a meeting and someone wanted to do that and there was one person by the pool who complained, so they left the sound the way it was. So uh, I, all I can say is that I'm hoping fairly soon we'll be able to have more comfortable meetings in the clubhouse where it won't necessarily have to be outside at the pool area. I just have to accommodate. I'm sorry. Oh, come on. This is asinine. I understand what you're saying, that it, and people who go to the pool all the time want to enjoy themselves. I don't know what five means in terms of hearing. However, last week, the first time, I played outdoors. Now, I think they have to take into consideration that this is COVID. These aren't normal circumstances. I never play outside, but because of playing in and being able to be unmasked and outside, we were able to enjoy that. It's not normal circumstances. Now, the music was okay or whatever, the and all of a sudden, at a certain point, Murder was there. It got so loud, it blew the eardrums out. We don't know how, why, who touched it. It was okay, it was on, we understood, and it got tremendously loud. Now, that speaker is another issue, the speaker. I don't know where the speakers fly. However, if the poor people who there all the time and want to enjoy it, which is fine, maybe, I don't know if there's one there, the speaker should be closer to them, and whereas the one closer to the people using I think I think the speakers are dispersed throughout the pool area. I don't think there's any one step of they're dispersed throughout the pool area. I, I, we're not here to move the speakers. I think what we tried to do, and I'll let everybody else talk in a minute, is that we wanted to set a level that we thought would accommodate everybody, so the pool people can enjoy the pool, that the card and the margin can play their games and hear each other. Okay, um, look at I play in the card room. Marjong tiles are very loud and noisy. Okay. They, they probably make more noise than the music does, all right? But I think there was also an issue is that people who were playing cards in Marjan were complaining that the people at the pool were making too much noise. No. And so like, no. So I think we're trying to set a sound level that accommodates everybody, So uh, and it's not forever either. But again, it's something that will be monitored. Jerry? Yeah, I, I just have a question. Uh, when you read the motion, you didn't read the word terminal. No, I took permanently out. That, that was intentional. Yes, it was yeah. intentional. I got to echo what you said at the very beginning. I think the whole conversation is ridiculous. It is. I think you <laughs> yeah. have people playing cards or not. Turn the volume down to you, there's nobody to play. Mm -hmm. if, if there's five people in the pool and nobody else playing cards, turn it up to one another. This is crazy. You try to let legislate every little minute, you can't do it. Well, we've had so many, we've had incidents, so I'm trying to prevent the incidents. For people were screaming at the office staff, or screaming at each other. Okay. So, yes. <laughs> Joe. Joe. Sorry, couldn't see. I dwell with your cover. I can't see. With the hat on. Go ahead. First of all, it was me. Okay. I had an out of body experience. I'm sorry, but it's just testimony to the degree of frustration that we've reached to meeting the pool people over the volume of music. It's been set at six for years. And all of a sudden, what she said, they had to move outside, and I get it, okay, that it's loud for them. It's an antiquated system. It's 20 years old. We did this big renovation for the clubhouse and didn't touch anything out there at the pool. Okay? Oh, underneath the cover, it does blow down on them. But when we're out there in the pool, we can't hear anything. Before you vote on anything, Please, lock off by the hot tub. It's not on. On five, it's not on. Or it's, it's like it should be on too. All right? And as far as, um, I'm sorry, the secretary. Who did I yell at? Okay. No, I'm not you. Andrea. <laughs> Andrea. Andrea. I, I, I really, I, I couldn't get to the office quick enough the next day. I brought the flowers, I brought her apart. And I'm really, really sorry. I thought you'd that. sick down. No. Yeah. <laughs> I just got, I just got very, very frustrated. So before you vote, it's not fair. If you don't walk out there and see what it's like for people that are at the pool, that want to enjoy the pool as a pool, okay, versus people that are out there playing cards and mind. Okay. Thank you. 
Okay, it's just it's just not fair to vote unless you want to vote. Can I say something? Go ahead, Mary. Oh, God. The music that was on six was disco music. They were playing. It's eighties. 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 Excuse me. It's eighties. It's not disco music. It's eighties. Eighties right. music. It's just it was so loud. It, we couldn't even hear each other. That was on six. That was on six. It was a very bad surprise. That kind of music is not appropriate. I should be back. Okay, I'm sorry. Another okay. solution to this situation is that the chairs, the table, the square table with four chairs should be moved further towards the ping pong table and you set up a few over there and not all underneath that one spot where the music is loud. And you spread these tables out. There's fans there, it's fine. No, we're in the shade. Hey, stop. All right, enough, everybody. Okay. What, what, just a second, please. We're not talking about moving furniture. We're talking about if we feel it's appropriate to, at this time to specifically set the speakers at five to accommodate the pool people and the part and the marjong players. That's what we're talking about. We're not talking about relocating furniture or any of that. So either we want to do this or we don't. I'll take a couple more people. Ed? Four years ago, we went through it. <laughs> the speakers for four years, we had no problems. We understand that. Myself and Mark Freeman came in with our cell phone. We adjusted the speakers to six. We adjusted the main volume. And it was five. Now I know that we've done some things in there. And it's a possibility that Thank the you. main volume now does not work with <clears throat> six. Okay. So, Debbie, who went out, adjusted the numbers to see what the proper volume would be? There's no proper volume. Wait a minute. Let me finish. No, I think he asked the question. Or underneath and in the pool. Now, did anyone do that? Okay. Or are you picking a number out of the sky yes. and saying we're going to drop it to five? We were at six. We had complaints. Right. I didn't say complaints. Yes, well, that's, no, that's what we're dealing with, Ed. We're dealing with it. Please. We're dealing yes. with issues Wait because of complaints please. Please. and because of people being. I'm asking a question. Who are the individuals? back in house and said, well, we're at five, we're at six, we're at five, let's go sit here, let's sit in no. the corner. Okay. Ed, enough. Okay, okay. thank you. That's enough. Okay, enough. We've been through this, okay? We've asked the committee to come up with a solution. It's been at six. It seems to have been an issue at six. One more person. Yes. Yes. Right, I understand that. I, I understand that. Okay. I understand that. Thank you. Okay. Debbie, the last time, and that's. I'm being Debbie, it's fine. Thank you. The motion before the Alvin, that's inappropriate. 
<laughs> and if you're going to be inappropriate, you can leave. We have enough issues going on. I don't need you applauding. Okay, it's inappropriate. Okay, enough. Okay, we have a motion before this board to a clubhouse committee recommendation to at this point in time set the level for five. Okay, and that this will be reviewed by the clubhouse committee. We've talked more than enough on this issue. All those in favor on the board of doing this, raise your right hand. Four. John, Elise, Lynn, Steve. Right, all those opposed? Three. Passes. Can we turn to zero of this plan for any Oh, it sounds good to me. Yeah, I'll, be, I'll go for that one. Okay. The next motion that we have, Happy Days, is to approve the Sports Complex Committee motion to reduce the side walls of the two Boca Ball, Bocce Ball courts to four inches to reduce the tripping hazard for a cost of $400. Work to be performed by PTCS. Doug? Yeah, this uh, motion Anybody else have any comments to make? Okay. All those in favor of passing this motion, raise your right hand. Thank you. I'm sorry, how did you? Nope. It's six in favor, and to all those opposed? One. How would you oppose it? Okay, the motion passes. Okay, next. We have a motion from the Entertainment Committee to add two cameras, one to overlook the sound video booth and one to at the locked door. Okay, we have no idea of cost. We have no idea of, uh, you know, exactly why, but this is a motion you presented, so. We presented this a while ago, and we've been asking for several years since we got the sound board, because every time uh, we check it before a show, two weeks before a show, three weeks before the show, something was wrong with it. Somebody was tampering with it. We don't know who. And it's not there for anybody to tamper with because then we can't use it. But then again, other committees who need it can't use it either because it's not working. So we was, uh, we wanted a lock on that. So we got a lock on the door that you can open up from the inside, but I don't know what's on there now because I haven't been back here. Um, so we want to see, you know, have cameras put in. And if you say yes, we'll find out what it's going to cost from, uh, from uh, whoever does it go on, I guess. Joe, there was a question about cameras. You said we had cameras and they weren't working. So do we have Can we cameras? delay this for 30 days? No cameras. What's the 30 days? Oh, I said, <laughs> can we so delay it? There, there, be a, there should be a camera up there. Yeah, there's nothing I want the one over there. No, the one up there will cover both areas. Both areas? Okay. Okay, the so one up there is the one who caught the people that were tampering with the that's keypad. Right. So okay. the one up there covers both areas. Okay, good. Yeah, that's Okay. Fine. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to carry that motion. I want to go down to um, you. Okay. Right now we have a motion uh, before this board to hire a part-time help for the office for 10 to 15 hours per week. This will be on a 90-day trial basis, and the estimated cost will be 150 to 225 per week, depending on the person that we hire and the exact amount of hours okay, that they work. 
This has become even more important to me since Betty has been out sick and that this office staff has taken on the additional responsibility of, of handling all the kinds of activities that Betty had to do for the social committee. I think they were swamped beforehand, now they're busier than ever. So that was my recommendation. We certainly have somebody in mind that we feel could do the job. She actually helped out today because Andrea's been out sick and she clearly proved herself to be capable and competent. It's a 90 day trial period. We would come back after 90 days and say, is it working? Is it feasible? Do we actually have space for this person, et cetera? So I presented this motion. Um, I have it before the board. Anybody on the board wish to ask any questions or say anything? Anybody like to make some recommendations? Greg? You got rid of the management company to save money. Put the onus on the office. I believe we gave the office a raise. We compensated for the extra work. Now we're, they're telling us you want us to go back and hire someone else to help with the work in the office. Anybody else have anything comments to make? I'll come if I sure. I'm sorry. Oh, Joe, did you want to speak? I'm sorry. Yeah, I got to say something. True, we got rid of the management company. But true, by getting rid of the management company, I would say we saved a minimum of five hours a week because of the hoops that we had to go through to accomplish tasks such as pay bills, transfer titles. Now it goes so easily. So yes, we got rid of the management company. We didn't put a burden on the office. We took a burden off the office, which was the management company. So I don't agree with you, Greg, in this situation. However, but Greg, 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 let me finish. I finish. Okay. I look at it the following. We have 100 hours in that office right now. 40 hours for Andrea, 40 hours for Karen, and Betty's in the office for 20 hours a week. Doesn't mean she's doing the secretarial work, but she's doing, she does answer the phones at time to help out. Without the 40 hours a week. Andrea's out. Andrea's going to be out. She's entitled to three weeks vacation. You understand that? Betty is out. So without, without trying to do what 100 hours is doing, in 40, you can't do it. So we need this help, and that's why it says a 90-day trial basis to try to get this done. I think it's a simple thing. Let it go for 90 days and see if it helps. No, I'm not confused. Thank you. You're welcome. Jerry. Just clarification. The work that this person would be doing is filing and answering phones, and is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. None of that was done by cash. No. Okay, anybody else have any comments? Alrighty. I'd like to present this motion to the board. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Okay, 7 0. The motion passed. Uh, Karen, we'll set up a time to meet the persons that you're interested in. Okay? Perfect. Okay, so let's go back. Let's see. We've got, um, I'm going to talk about the paint. That's going to be the last one. We're going to, we have right now to approve the updated proposal from creative contracting for a total of $17,291 minus our deposit of $5,438, leaving a balance due of $11,853. This increase is being due to failure to include certain concrete sidewalk repairs. This is all part of the budget for 2022 that was approved for a total of $45,000. These are necessary expenses. We've already had one lawsuit filed against us for someone tripping over something at the top of their drive. But we'd like to prevent any further lawsuits. We have major issues with the trees lifting up, which have caused problems in this community. They have to be addressed. So I'm asking that the board approve this. Anybody have any? Questions concerning this expense on the board? Any comments? Anybody in the audience? Okay. All those in favor of passing this motion, please raise your right hand. Wait, wait, wait. I have one question. Let's see. Is this including the motion that you sent on email to no, us? No, this is a separate. Okay. Okay. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Seven zero. Okay. We have uh, one more motion that I added before we get to the point. Karen informed me wait, the wait, other wait. day. At least you have others that you've skipped over. At least I don't see it. What? Item D, I didn't see the board approved. I'm going, I'm going to go, what? Ratify. I, item D, I, I didn't. I haven't, I've D. gone to D. We did do D. No. no. 
No, we did not do D. Did not do D. My oh, record, so it looks like we're all, we all agree. Oh, okay. We did do okay, D. So I'll go back to D. Yeah, no, it's not. Uh, to ratify the approval, this has been approved by, to ratify the approval to have the HOA attorney take action to terminate the fully executed contract with Postal Painting. Okay. Anybody on the board have any comments? Anybody outside? Yes. Well, first of all, that's not really relevant to this issue, but yes, we do have bids from other painters. No, it's a, I'll tell you how it's okay. going to We it. have bids from other painters. We cannot do anything of thinking about retaining services of anyone else so we know if we still have a contract that we have to go forward with with Postal. So we have to know that first before we can do anything with any other painters. Okay, so I don't know what you're contracting with that point, but my, my, my comment is that when this was signed in 2016, no one knew what was happening. The COVID with job loss, with expenses, everything's on inflation. I just want to know if anybody or any committee has spoken to the painters to say, what will it be or what will it take so that they can make a profit because they can't make a profit on this. So of course they're not going to want to pay. Well, there's there's, uh, there's a lot of issues involved in this. It's not just what the cost of the paint is. There's many issues involved with Postal, but before we can do anything, before we can move forward, which is why we're also going to have a town hall meeting, that we can discuss things further. But the issue we're having in front of us right now is to ratify the fact that we've requested our attorney to contact Postal to see if we are able to terminate the contract with them. That's what is currently before the board. Okay, anybody else have any comments? Give all those in favor of passing the motion, raise your right hand. Seven zero. It was ratified, not passed. Ratified. Excuse me. So let's skip any others. All right. So now we have Karen uh, presented me with something uh, yesterday. I approached the board. We felt we would discuss it at this meeting. We have two more houses, okay, at 120026 and 120027 Oak Vista Drive with tree root issues, okay? Uh, the one at 12026 Oak Vista has two trees which have uplifted the sidewalks. The cost of the removal is $1,750. 12027 Oak Vista has one tree that uplifted the sidewalk, pavers, valley gutter, and asphalt on the roadway. The cost to remove that tree is $1,500. Total cost comes to $3,250. Okay. We then have uh, a request into concrete to create a contracting to visit locations and tell us what the cost of then the paver uh, valley gutter repairs will cost. So those will also be additional. As I said before, we have a pending lawsuit now because someone who fell, okay, we're trying to prevent going forward. I can tell you that as a lawyer, that if I was representing an insurance company and I found out there's been a lawsuit and then I looked at other trees that were issues and you didn't as a community do anything about it, you're leaving yourself wide open and liable for additional losses, which would mean that your rate of insurance will go up and up and up. Okay, so it's my opinion that even though maybe one of the locations that doesn't look 100%, that these are something we better ratify now and take care of. Anybody on the board have comments to make? Steve. I went to both locations and noticed that on 2027, yes, it must come down. Needs repairs besides the cost of removing a tree will be fixing the sidewalk, the person's driveway, the road and the side swale for the water drainage must be repaired and the root system has gone into the street. The area across the street at 2026, I see no major problem now the two trees they talk about, one is leaning forward. Yes, maybe that's a possibility. Uh, the sidewalk has been leveled out. The tree closest to the sidewalk on 2026 is pretty, it's at least 15 feet from their driveway and there's no effect on the driveway. They were tr root trimming on that uh, tree about th two years ago and I think it's fine. I think we have to save the expense on one area and absorb, I don't think we can absorb it, but we're gonna to have to fix the area on 20027's driveway, walkway, 
and sidewalk, and I think that's more important right now, and we're trying to save money, I think that's a way to save some money. Okay, I, I don't, I, we can be penny-wise and pound foolish. My concern is potential losses, and Danny from Clean and Green had recommended to us, uh, he is the one who recommended the tree should come down, okay? I'm not an arborist, I can only go by certain recommendations, but we've had issues in the past I'd like not to have any issues going forward with more people tripping and falling and wanting to sue the community because we didn't take care of an issue. Okay, anybody else on the board have any comments to make? Any questions from anybody else? Okay, at this time I'm requesting a vote from the board. All those in favor of taking care of the three trees discussed What's for a total? total of $3,250, please raise your right hand. Okay, six. Uh, all those opposed? One. Okay, now, the last issue on our agenda is the paint. We're asking to approve the January 2022 recommendations of the Avalon Estates Painting Task Force. Steve, do you wish to discuss this? As a member of the task force, I recommended to the board uh, a palette of A, B, C, and D for approval um, based on the base colors and the trim colors. I spell it out in the recommendation. I, I don't think I'd have to read it. It's all printed out for everyone to review. Um, I think if there's any questions, uh, there was a uh, email sent out by Elise in regard to having for the future a town hall meeting. Town hall meeting to discuss everything involved in the palettes and the colors. I think that's uh, what we have right now. Does anybody else from the board have any comments to make? Anybody? One question. I've been asked by several people, and I still don't understand. Are they going to keep their, can they keep the colors they have now? Yes or no? No. 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 I don't, I think that's going to be a major problem going down. No. Okay. I think when you have a town hall meeting, and I think the majority of the people that I've been hearing the comments about it, they're very pleased with the palette and they're very happy of the new colors coming to the community. And I think you have to really hear it at this meeting to really make a decision like yeah, that. And, and I'm hoping also that with the town hall we can clarify the questions the community has about color and trim and, and all of those things that, that go along, along with it. So I'm hoping that by doing the town hall we can clarify some of those questions. Anybody else on the board at this time have any comments? Okay, yes, Doug. Town hall meetings that you contemplate, will that also include the discussion on the clubhouse color? Oh, certainly, I can, yeah, I mean... We as a task force only made a recommendation to the board of what we feel, okay? Uh, I assume that when we have this town hall meeting and we have a feeling of the community, I think that input will be very... Yeah important to making a final decision on that. Okay, so what I'm hearing is that there's been no predetermination made as far as the coloring of the clubhouse and we will discuss further. Yes. And that all the Absolutely. and when we discuss it we're gonna keep in mind that all the buildings will be the same color. I mean, you know, the clubhouse is gonna be you know we're not gonna Well have we talk about the stripes. clubhouse, you're talking about the tennis building, yep. the gatehouse House. The uh, gazebo yep. and, and the wall around the community is yes. part of the base colors. Yes. Okay. yes. Yes. Excuse me. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, Joe. Joe has something to say. You I'm said, sorry. well, no, no, question, really, I'm yes. sort of say. You said this doesn't include the clubhouse, but at the bottom of the page, what it does? Yeah. No, I meant it, it does include the yes. clubhouse. Oh, I thought I heard he said no, doesn't no, include. No, it does. No. The motion tonight is including the clubhouse. The colors for the clubhouse. Okay. okay anybody and all else? the accessories okay. that I just mentioned. Yeah, I just what? heard the, heard wrong. I think it's necessary before you 
vote on this thing, get all the facts in front of them. So I made a vote. I'm sorry. I can't show it to everyone. Flower. All homeowners will be required to select new color. That means every one of us, even those that want the same color they have, cannot have those colors. I personally want the same colors I have now. There are 40 homes. Now, there are, I have to agree there are colors close to, mm -hmm. but there was no effort made to, be, to get the same color. There are 40 homes that are the more than pink houses. They're not being offered any single color. Yeah. And how do you know that they even want those colors? Mm -hmm. You, you have, no, you have, you raised this issue before. Don't interrupt. No, no, but he's talked about all these people that hate all don't the colors. Don't interrupt. Excuse you, me. Have you ordered to them? Have you, you asked them? You, I've asked you to provide me with a list of all the people that who have told job. you that they're totally unhappy with that the color selection job. and that they definitely want the more color house. You haven't provided me with anybody. Forty any new homes are being told they cannot have their colors. They have not been, to the best of my knowledge, they have not been surveyed or asked. Well, imagine if you had that color. You've lived with it for 18 years, and suddenly this, a group of people tell you, you can't have that color. Yeah. Half the, most of the people never even picked the colors. You bought your house, that was the color of the house you bought. No, original uh, well, the original owners. How many people are still original owners in this community? I mean, out, out of 365 homes. Less than 20%. Less than 20%, okay? So Again, the vast majority of us would say, we bought a house and that was the color of the house. Okay. I respectfully request you not to butt in. And let Excuse me, finish. me. I respectfully request you not to butt in and allow me that these are the facts. Three minutes. These are all the what? facts. What facts? This is, there are this is for the town hall. This is to discuss. No, I'm hoping that this, oh, this, is a, this, this I'm board, hoping. We, you've argued and argued. This board has the right to approve the color selection. You have vehemently opposed this from day one for whatever your reason, even though you basically have said that the color of your house is basically the color that you could pick. No, okay. I don't put words in okay. my mouth. I'm being told what you told me. And I'm, right. This has been discussed. This is not the no. place for this discussion. Folks, this board has to the approval. Yeah. Excuse me. This board has the approval to select the oh, color. Do you think I you have allowed? argued that this board has approval to select and make any decisions. Okay. Oh, do you think I should be allowed no. to finish? You can't get three people together to decide what you want for lunch. So you think we can get 368 homeowners to get together and decide this is the perfect color for their house. It's and never going to happen. This presentation. That's all he's asking. Give him three minutes. I have three. three minutes. You've got three minutes. Go. Go ahead. You have three minutes. Three. Go ahead. There are 112 combinations of the palettes they covered between two and three colors. There are 112 different possible combinations. How is that going to look? You're going to have houses with red and gray. You're going to have red? houses with red. 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 What are you talking red about? Red roofs. Gray houses, why are, are you are so obstinate? Red? Not no, to you're the people. obstinate one, excuse me. What, what, we are talking about what we said before. Don't talk, red houses? You're talking about red painting roof, houses roof, red. Gray houses, roof, roof. Okay. red roofs okay. with gray houses and darker trim. You're going to drive down and see houses with dark garages and light garages. This is, this is, there's 112 possibilities. Yeah. Is that, is that gonna really look homogeneous? As I stated here, I think it requires a vote or a survey of it. They're going to have a town hall. There is a solution, folks. Homeowners who wish to keep their colors, allow them to keep their colors. Homeowners that wish to change their colors, allow them to change their colors to the approved colors of, that the board approves. Doesn't that make sense? No. Why no. aggravate everybody? No, you have it. That's it, thank you. Thank you. Yes. Uh, I have heard of being on the committee that uh, the task force that I'll be supporting. And firstly, thank you for your presentation. When you live in an age nowhere, you join it. You get certain benefits yes. and there's certain negatives. You no longer require the house that you pay for Long Island or a whole lot of things the way you want to. You can't plan a service the way you want to. And in return, you get a community of clubhouse and all the parts. The board that resides with the board, the board makes the decision. I 
I'm an original homeowner. I love the color I have now. The point is it's over 19 years. We went through all the other communities. We want to see what we said what's going on. I suggest for you to take a look at every new community. Our colors are really passe. And people want to buy in and out. They are being sold. But we want to keep up a look, like the clubhouse and everything else. Those colors are neutral enough and beautiful enough to attract everybody here to find something that's appropriate. As far as great moves are going, we're in those great moves that have an audience. So it doesn't matter what you put in. Most of the moves are regular orange. They all look great because the roof is the minor thing to get you driven the house. When you look at them now, you don't sit on them in the yellow house with great roof because a lot of them do with the, with the yellow. Does the yellow and red go together? I mean, I would have chosen that. That's the way it was. Okay, thank you. All right. The resort is designed with the community meeting after we do this, but I, I don't see where there is a problem. There. Okay, Carol? You know, one of the problems with people that come to meetings after decisions are made by a task force, if this matters so much to you, I really feel you should have been part of that task force, not after they've spent an entire year working on it. And anybody could have joined the task force because I heard Joe, Joe mentioned twice, if you are interested in joining the task force, please put your name forward. So there's a lot of people that work very hard on that committee. I wasn't on that committee, but I really feel that they work for a year on it. And to all of us, it comes after they've made their Okay, thank you, Carol. I'm sorry, Joe? I'm sorry. Oh, no, no. You've had a chance to talk. No, you've spoken already. I'm sorry. No, you spoke already. Jackie, you spoke on the issue. I just want to say, I'm an original homeowner. I did not choose the color of my house. We were only allowed to choose the roots. And I'm very happy that we were choose the color of the house. Because uh, now everybody has a reason. Only chose the roof. No, we chose the colors. No color. We chose colors. Could have bought a spec house. Yes, right. Could have bought a spec house, Len. Hmm? She could have bought a spec house. Well, meaning, mine was a spec house. Thank you. And a positive vote by the board. Thank you. Thank you. Will require 300 plus homeowners to change the colors of their house. That's a total of possibly 14, 15 people. To change 360 homes. If I want to buy a 26 pound dog and legally have him running around the streets of Avalon, I need a vote of 60% or more individual homeowners to allow me to have a 26 pound dog. In Avalon. Okay. All right, Greg, oh, what's this? What, so, this is not relevant. This is not relevant. So having said that, we can allow this to happen for the weekend. Is it right? Is it legal with you guys? Of course it is. Yep. But sometimes my question is right in your heart. Well, you've joined an HOA, that, and that's least, part of an HOA. Least, I'm very disappointed. We try to be respectful that you shoot us down and i said this at the last meeting this is the only time only time that the residents can come together and petition our members once a month that's all you get to see is the people who care to come to a meeting and it's just so disheartening to be beaten down. You're not being you beaten down. You have talked, and he has talked, and he has raised, he has, glad he has, good. Then he has raised the same issue time and time again. Time and time again, he's raised the same issue. The HOA board has the right to choose the paint color. You don't like HOA rules, don't live in an HOA. I'm sorry. Okay. I'd like to have the board come to look into the possibility. It was never demanded that they do it and then hit it. Okay. We're going to take a vote on this. Okay. Everybody on the board. Can I ask you?
But brief question. There is no distinction in terms of the pallets with respect to the roof color. In other words, in other words, you know, in other words, you can have gray even though it's a red roof. Right. Or whatever. I mean, because I've seen some communities yeah. where a decorator would say you have to use oh. winter colors versus fall. No, no. Okay. So I'm just, okay. Okay. All right. I'm not going to vote. Okay. Everybody on the board. The board. Everybody in favor, please. Well, you got somebody in the back. Well, doing is picking out there, right? Right. Okay. We're picking the pallets. We're brewing those pallets. Oh, we're not approving. That's okay. So everybody in favor of approving the motion, please raise your right hand. Okay. Six in favor. All those opposed? One. Okay. Anybody else in that list has anything to speak about that they haven't spoken about already? Sign it. Sign it. Sign it. The party. Sure I did. We did the party. No, we didn't approve. Yes, we did. We approved the ballot. Did I miss the Valentine party? Did we approve it? We approved yeah, it. We approved it. Yeah. Three dollars we approved. Okay. What do you have to say? Okay. Brenda? Yeah. Okay, this question is addressed to this question is addressed to Steve Gower, liaison to the ACC, and Karen Bruno, our teacher, and the rest of the board. I'd like to know why Avalon State has a rule book, rules, regulations, and guidelines. And one of them is a list of acceptable plantings is available in the Avalon Business Office. No tree or palm shall be removed by any homeowner from any portion of any lot without prior written consent of the ACC. Am I correct? That is correct. Okay. So, why, about three weeks ago, a resident removed two palm trees that the builder put in without consent from the ACC? A written form was never filed. I appreciate, Karen and Steve, since you were there that day, when the trees were removed, why wasn't a compliance letter sent to them? You know, if residents are going to take out, take it upon themselves to do things to their exterior of their home and not fill out an ACC form, then why shouldn't, why do we have an ACC committee? I was the liaison to that committee. Stu Morris and I brought it to the attention of the CD. And that's what we did. It was up to the CD to follow up with the resident, and she did her job on that end. That resident eventually did fill out a form after the fact. Uh, the ACC can only bring it to the CD for a compliant situation. She resolved the situation on her own, and that was the end result. What was it? Now, you're going to tell me that I could take a tree out, and I don't have to buy the form, and I could plant a tree four weeks later, and that's okay? Then why, excuse me, let me finish. Then why do we have an ACC form? I'd like to know that. Well, I recommended that they should be sent to compliance, and I left it up to the CP to resolve it. And any time there's a compliance put through, it's going through the CD, and she has to follow up with it. If she can get an answer and compromise between the, the resident and the community, then it's up to her to do it, okay? That's correct. So why? Uh, so there's not much you I can do at that okay, point. Okay, I understand that. Okay. I but Joe Kathy, has something to say first. No, I want to ask No, that. Joe has something to say first. Go right in there, Joe. Nothing works perfect all the time. Nothing. Uh, yes. So do, do people make changes without filing for the ACC? Yes. Have the ACC committee received applications that were post fact? Yes. This one was done in error, and now it's being corrected. The ACC committee can take the following choice, and not accept it being done post fact, but it was done post fact. You're right, it's wrong, and it's a bad example, and will go on every time, no matter what you do. Yeah. That's my wait, that, that's okay. my opinion, but the fact is, ACC has reviewed and discussed and approved of items in the past post fact. That's it. Okay, you said it's wrong that day. You can tell me that we don't have to file it. You know, I just don't understand this whole 
community. This resident has been living here 17 years. She knows, and she made a comment that you gave her permission to take it out. Okay? No, let me finish. I'm let me finish. I'm so just, I'm frustrated I'm about this because I live by rules. You say nothing is perfect. You're right, but we have rules here. You don't like the rules? Like they said about the painting, then move out. You don't like that you removed two true trees that the builder put in, and three weeks later, and Karen, you were there. Stu Morris was next door, and you were there. I think it's a disgrace. I don't think we we need any rules here because nothing is ever enforced. Karen, I'm sorry, Joe. I, I have to. Sure. Excuse me. I have to come back. Um, number one, there are things in force, and, and number two is I did not give him permission, and number three is who filed a complaint? Everybody seems to object here in the audience about everybody else's action. I don't see a complaint form. File a complaint form. That's what it's there for. If you don't like. If you don't like what you see, file a complaint form. It's simple. There's two things right at the beginning of the complaint form, which everybody that's never seen it, not your name, not who you're against, what paragraph, what page was violated. If you can't say that, that now if you believe something was violated, file a complaint. He just said it, that he brought it to Stu Morris and he brought it to the CDC. That's not, was it a formal complaint? Yes or no? Yes. Written complaint? Yes. Okay, so that she's acting on it. That's what she has the right to do, doesn't she? Absolutely. Well, you say she did. I'm telling you she did. Karen, did you act on it? Of course I did. I went right down there as soon as Stu called me. Yes, that day. I went right down there mm -hmm. to take a look. Mm -hmm. I asked her what she was doing, if she had any uh, paperwork. She said no, she didn't need it because she got permission from someone. And uh, okay, and then I said to her, no, it's not good enough. You must file, and the trees were already out. Mm -hmm. And I said to her, and the triple palm is going in? She said, yes. I said, well, at this juncture, the only thing I can do is ask you to um, fill out the ACC form. What, what, what was your preference? For me to write a formal complaint, somebody walks in my office, abuses the hell out of me with a big bell. I didn't file a formal complaint. Okay? So I try to do the best I can. And all the rest of them. gave them the opportunity to do the right thing, which she did. I'm sorry, I didn't punish her. But that's the way I work. So. Okay. All right, then Fran, you wanted to speak? Yes, I kind of want to piggyback on what Brenda said about rules. People that do not follow the rules are not being penalized. This mask thing was a big thing where all these different things were listed were going to happen if you did not follow the mask rules. There is a board member sitting right next to you who does not follow the mask rules. And I want to know why he is not being penalized. I told everybody when I began speaking at the beginning of this meeting, that we had tried to accommodate people and give people a little leeway. And that moving forward, we would not. And that going forward, if people do not wear a mask that covers their nose, they will be penalized. If you can't wear a mask that covers your nose, or face covering, excuse me, that covers your nose, then do not come to the clubhouse. So I dealt with that at the very beginning. There have been other people we've seen walking around that have lowered the mask, and we tried to correct it. We tried to give people leeway. There's no more leeway. I made that clear tonight. Okay? Well, I can't change the past. I we try to we try to accommodate people. We try to make it nice for people. We try to give people leeway when they're wearing face coverings so they can play cards. Not and people went angry at me because I didn't say face masks. Okay. 
So we tried to come up with some rules that we felt would work in this community that could be enforced, okay? I've done the best that I can do. I put it on the table tonight. That's it. Going so forward, if you can't, forward, if someone doesn't do it, then someone will be penalized. Okay, I said that at the beginning. It's stated that way back when the first I know that, Fran. going to be penalized immediately. I know that, and I and express I that. Week after week, okay. and they're not We try to accommodate it. We have rectified okay. as far as I'm concerned the situation. Okay, anything else? Thank you. The meeting is adjourned at 8. <laughs>